It's retro time! Maybe, uh, sort of. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Like, this uh, unassuming looking package, you can probably actually tell what it is by the tape on the top. It's from a small company you might have heard of called Atari. They, uh, they had a console called the VCS, which is currently called the Atari 2600. And that is, I'm led to believe, what this is modeled after. So, um, I don't have a whole lot of nostalgia for Atari personally, because I didn't really grow up with it. But, I am really interested in seeing what this is, because it's more than just a game console. So let's get this open. Um, oh, here we go. I might be able to finagle this side. Yeah? Yeah? You didn't take over the bottom, did you, Jono? Well, I'm opening it from the bottom. It's what you get. Back door? Back door. Best way to get in. We're in through the back door. And it is actually the bottom. I guess they uh, they didn't expect me to open it from this end. So let's get this out of here. Oh, look at that. So, what size shirt did they send us? XL. I'm XL. Thank you. Uh, let's show them the shirt first. <laughs> Atari VCS. What a nice little logo there. It kind of reminds me of the uh, Atari boot screen uh, with the like multicolored rainbow effect that they had going on there. And it actually says in the back here that it was backed in 2008. So I was a year off. It was 2000. It was backed in 2018. I was uh, 10 years off. <laughs> <laughs> Since Andy is XL and I am, well, unfortunately not quite XL. There you go. Thank you, Atari. <laughs> I don't know if we can keep that or not. Moving on, we have other things that we might be able to keep, like this uh, this here sticker. Ooh, They're like actually stickers. pretty high quality stickers. So that's the ancillary stuff. Let's get this out of the outer wrapping and take a look at the box. Ooh, Ooh sexy. Actually, that is quite fetching. I actually really do like the, the like subtle dark walnut that they got here. That's coming, that's what they call it here, black walnut. Video computer system, gaming plus PC streaming. Uh, okay, 800, I don't know what that means. Does it mean that it has Atari 800 support? Can I play 800 games? Did you? Could I? Should you? Should I? Should you? Uh, I mean, the Atari 800 was... Actually not a bad machine, if I remember correctly. It's like the 5200, except it's a computer. One thing that might be throwing a couple of you off, if you haven't been keeping up, is uh, this gaming plus PC plus streaming bit. As it turns out, this is actually straight up an AMD Ryzen-based machine. It's actually a Ryzen embedded processor, and uh, the graphics are a Vega 3, I think, so it's not super powerful, but it's more than enough to play these kinds of games. Can you scalp it? I don't know. I mean, it'll probably be scalped a little bit, but I'm not sure how big the market is for it. So we'll have to see. But memories. Memories. <laughs> Can you put a price on memory? I mean, I lose mine all the time. So yeah, it's got the uh, new and retro games and apps built in. 100 plus Atari classics. Okay. Uh, discover Atari classics with a modern controller. Yep. Okay, featuring LED effects and rumble. I don't know what the LED effects are all about, but we'll find out. And customize, unique PC mode, upgradable RAM and storage. Every console should have this. I mean, maybe not actually, but you know, it, this is this is good. This is basically a console on a PC. You remember the uh, Subor Z Plus that we looked at on LTT a little while ago? That was basically the same kind of idea is to have like a special game OS filled with games, and then like a straight up PC OS like Windows or Linux, or in this case, it also supports Chrome OS. Yeah, this could be a very useful little machine for somebody who wants to, you know, play games and have a small little computer to occupy very little space in their home. Let's get it out of the box. So two chambers. This feels like it might be the main unit. Oh, yeah. Almost certainly. Let's uh, let's work our way up in terms of size here. That is adorable. 
I like the mat. The mirror kind of works alongside it, but I know that this is going to pick up fingerprints. This button here is the uh, connect slash pairing button, I'm sure. These two uh, seem to be menu and back. And, uh, oh yeah, here's another button on, this, on the front here. So you've got two buttons like that, and then you've got your directions. Never been a fan of this particular layout for controls, but uh, it is classic. So they've got that going for them. It feels, feels pretty solid, actually. Um, it's not like creaky or anything like that. And two nice, uh, nice rubber strips on the bottom so you can plant it down and really get going. There's no suction cups and there's no place to put suction cups though. So if you're into that, then you're out of luck, unfortunately. <laughs> nice lengthy uh, micro USB cable. I'm more interested in this box though. Okay, yeah, so there's a little quick start in here. That button is in fact for pairing and for power. Uh, with these two buttons here, you can toggle between VCS and Xbox mode. That basically means that you can toggle between like their proprietary like controller mode to being able to be used in the PC mode, so in Windows 10 or whatever. And here's their not an Xbox controller. Uh, hmm. Okay. So, Atari is much lighter than Microsoft. Um, there's no knurling on the back or anything. It's just soft plastic. It's mm, it's actually pretty solid. Again, it's not creaky or anything. This D-pad is at very least passable. This D-pad is not good. It's if you don't like how the Sega Genesis controller feels with its like disc-shaped D-pad, this is a million times worse because there's no like actual detents. Yeah, like I, I don't feel like I'm pressing anything in particular after this first press. So if I, if I were to do like a, um, like a dragon punch in Street Fighter, that might or might not fire. I have no idea because there's no feedback. I'm just like rubbing my finger across the D-pad. So that's a thing. But I guess we'll have to see how it feels in game. Um, triggers feel okay, but they're a little spongy. Um, yeah, these are a little bit spongy on the way down too, I guess. When they, it's it's soft. Let's put it that way. They're not bad though. And then there's these bumpers, which I mean, they're just bumpers. Presumably this has a built-in battery, and yes, it does. It's at 75% charge right now. If the three dots are to be believed, that's. Atari's controller. It's basically this, but it's different. I would say for the for the worse, but I mean they tried. Yeah, just another micro B cable. And finally, the main event. The Atari VCS itself. There it is. These nice little tabs to pull it out. That's cute. It's got an external power supply. Why do they use different types of bags here? This one is resealable. This one is just open. And this one is sealed. Give you three times of like experience of unboxing. Yeah, you get three times the unboxing experience. Anyway, this this guy here is just the other end to this uh, power adapter. And we've got an HDMI kill. Anything else in here? Snack for later. All right, so all this stuff is boring. This is the This is the real meat of the experience here. Stop. Thank you for your Atari VCS purchase. If you have questions or problems with your purchase, please do not return it to the retail store. Great. We didn't get it from a retail store, so I don't know where we return it if we had any problems with it. So uh, thank you. We're stuck with it. <laughs> this is mine now. I'll just, I'll just make it so that they're taking up space in the warehouse. And then at some point they'll beg me to take them. That, that is real wood. I'm touching real wood right now. How much does this thing cost? Three ninety nine. It's more than most mini consoles, but when you consider it's like a Ryzen computer that's upgradable, like it's it's not too bad. You got your two USB ports up front. These are 3.0 Type A. And around the back, we've got two USB ports, HDMI, Ethernet, gigabit, AC power, and. Uh, Power, power. Okay, so should we get set up then? 
I mean, I could, like, do this kind of thing. Verify the account, Jono! I did! Hi, Short! <laughs> How to install the companion app, yep. Okay, so, I have the VCS companion app here. I may actually have to connect it to the same Wi-Fi network. But, uh, it's taken a minute to, to find the VCS. Okay, you know what? I, I think I don't care enough about that feature. I so. play some games! Yeah! Let's play some games! Thanks Grammarly for sponsoring today's video, and hopefully you don't hate that we forgot to segue this. Grammarly is a digital writing assistant that helps you with grammar and spelling suggestions. Simply install the browser extension, log in, and start typing. There's also Grammarly Premium, which provides more feedback on your writing. For the job hunters out there, we recommend checking out the vocabulary and clarity suggestion tools. They help you save time and make your writing more compelling by finding synonyms for overused words and completely removing unnecessary words. Now it's much easier to make a great first impression on every application or introductory email. Go to Grammarly.com slash short circuit to sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium. And uh, get Premium today to help you save time and work more efficiently. Well, let's go to the VCS vault and see what happens. Ooh. Okay, so asteroids, I guess these are the arcade versions? Okay, so you can choose 2600 games or Atari arcade games. Let's go with asteroids. Up is thrust. Directions are directions. The A button is shoot. B is that teleport thing that almost always kills you. It's uh, it's got some pretty hefty rumble actually. Like it's 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 hefty. So that's asteroids. Uh, it's neat how the box is in 3D and the cabinet is in 3D. Oh, the back of the box isn't modeled. Come on. Uh, I'm gonna switch to the other controller for the authentic 2600 experience. Uh, to be clear, I've never actually played a real 2600, so I'm gonna suck at this. Let's do Sprint Master. Oh, cool. Oh, that's neat. It's got the owner's manual. There was an NES emulator for Dreamcast called Nestor DCSE that let you do this as well. This is super sweet. I love it. <gasps> okay, you can turn on scan lines. Oh, you can do realistic vector display, bright, bold, standard. Okay, cool. So they're actually giving you a lot of options here. Audio, yeah. Flicker authentic, yeah, you can... Uh, I think what that means is um, either they're actually filtering it or they're removing the sprite limit, which, I mean, I guess technically this didn't... Uh, I've, I've, the 2600 hardware was weird. Right, these are all the con like settings that you would set with jumpers, like switches, on the original 2600. It's kind of hilarious. Oh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Oh, yep, I crashed immediately. And I crashed again. I am not good at this game. I'm not good with this controller. Yeah, he lapped me like twice. And oftentimes this is what happened when you play a uh, 2600 game. The game just runs and you do a game and then it kicks you back out. There's the back of the box. So I guess they have the back of the box for some games, but not all of them. Yars Revenge. That's a classic. I've never played it. Um, but uh, this is this is far more amenable to the uh, joystick than Sprint Race or whatever it was called was. Like I've seen this game played before, but I've never played it myself. Let's try something with uh, with like dial support here. Oh yeah. And I immediately missed. Oh hey, this this even has rumble in it. Okay, this rotary encoder is really good. I love it. There, There is the slight issue of there being a little bit of stiction when you, uh, when you turn it. Making finer adjustments is a little bit difficult, but making flicks is super satisfying. What else is there to say? This is a pretty neat little console. Oh, we, don't, we didn't try the operating system PC mode, but they didn't have a PC mode, so I don't know what we can do with that. Yeah, like, obviously there's more to this. Let us know if you want to see a full in-depth review in LTT. Like, I mean, there's the PC mode, there's the upgradability, there's uh, so many different things that can be done with this. I mean, I know there have been reviews of it already, but maybe we can find some other angle to kind of really push it or do something weird with it. I don't know. Um, all I know is that it's a really neat little mini PC. Uh, for 400 bucks, you're getting 100 games for free. Uh, well, 100 games built in. Now, they're not the most... 
complex games. They're certainly not the games that I have the most nostalgia for, but they are still like classic games. And some that I wasn't even expecting to see there, like the Sword Quest games, which um, you should actually read up on. Those are ridiculously interesting. Uh, so yeah, like let us know if you want to see more about this. Otherwise, for now, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you uh, get subscribed to see more short circuits in the future. Oh my! Oh. Don't do this. <laughs>